I set? I think I'm set. Ready. We are so ready. All right. Good luck. Have fun. It's been a fun tournament. Yep. <laughs> All right. And wager he starts with either e4 or d4, maybe knight f3. We'll see. It's going to be one heck of a match. D4. All right. I'm going to play Old Faithful here. Um, I know in some games I've been playing the Slav. I'm going to fall back to my older repertoire, which is just uh, King's Indian. And we'll see how a chess master is supposed to play the King's Indian, because he's going to play it well, and I might learn a thing or two. Um, rather, I meant to say a candidate master. All right, F3. I've seen this system before. Um, key point of the system is that E4 is well defended, so an early C5 isn't as convincing here. I think, however, I could still go with like A5. How's this go? Um, where do I want my knight again? Yeah, if I play a5, e5, and knight a6 and such, that's all okay. Could also play c6 here directly, but that seems a little strange. Um, well, c6 here isn't so bad. Although, uh, wait, where do I want my knight again? I forget how this goes. Yeah, we'll play c6, because I've read Pierce Alert, um, Lab Albert's book. And there are many Pierce lines where black does play c6. My opening knowledge is pretty rudimentary. I don't really know a lot of advanced ideas in these openings, which really does not bode well for somebody who plays the King's Indian defense, um, I may say. But no, I'm aiming to play e5 and put my piece on the c5 square. And uh, maybe I should be doing this, maybe I should be doing something else. This certainly does expend a lot of temp I to land my pieces on squares where they might not necessarily want to be. Um, but I don't know, it doesn't seem bad. It's, it's a very open-ended system, I guess. So he's moved his queen. I'm going to bet that he doesn't exchange and trade queens. He might exchange and like play bishop d3 or something weird. Um, but yeah, I'm not sure. Also, I could consider knight uh, bd7 to c5, maybe. Although then d6 is pretty weak. So... Maybe I go through a6 instead so I don't hang the d-pawn. he's maybe intending bishop g5 or bishop h6. Um, I didn't think he would do this. Uh, I don't seem to have a good alternative to recapturing, so I do recapture. And I can just tuck my king on c7. Or, yeah. If we trade queens and he checks Check. me, I just go king c7. We get a fun little endgame. And hopefully I play the endgame well. But yeah, this way I definitely, I mean, I could get mated in the middle game. That could happen. Um, suppose a5 did weaken the b6 square, so he could check me. I'm not sure if he wants to. He might not be sure either. Regardless of how sure or uncertain he is, or I am, uh, it might still be a good idea. Or it could be other nonsense. I don't know. I don't really know openings that well. 
Like, I know that putting pawns here and trying to put a knight there is a setup. It's perhaps not the one I aiming, am aiming for. Um, perhaps what I'm aiming for doesn't make any sense. But, I don't know. I've certainly blockaded my bishop, and his bishop dominates mine, and that mine is going to take a while to develop. Um, but with my king on c7, things don't look so terrible. I just put my bishop here, my knight either to a6 or d7. Uh, and then uh, just slowly maneuver my way out of, around, and so forth, the center. Uh, his ideas would be trying to place pieces on my dark squares while I'm still weak there. Like, I don't think my king belongs, say, on e6. I don't think that that is something worth considering. Or it's worth maybe worth considering, but I don't think it's a good option because he can play not that not that he can play c5 and bishop c4 if my king ends up here. So um, my king would not make it to e6. I'm not sure where else my king might belong. If I had a spare tempo, probably should have spent, the, or if I could reorder my moves, it would be nice to put the bishop on e6 rather than spend the tempo on playing a5. A5 is going to make a B5 break very difficult to achieve. Um, whereas I guess in contrast, it's not so difficult for him to break here if he really wanted to, but he doesn't want to for quite some time. Because uh, for now, my bishop controls a lot of dark squares, and pushing F4 would just make my pieces more effective. Hmm. Well, it's nice to know some people are taking the game seriously. It should be a good game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know that Nightbot times people out. Nightbot's not the only one to time people out. People should think before they speak. So, um, it's still his move, right? I wonder if he's seriously debating bishop b6, or what else could he be debating here? I know castles is an option. Um, certainly moving the knight or the bishop are options. Pushing g3 is an option. Um, I'm not sure what else he could be considering other than maybe trying to land a knight on b6. But I can stop that easily enough by just putting my own knight on d7. Either knight, really. Um, this knight's dominated by the pawn, uh, and if it moved to h5, it would be dominated by these other pawns. So this knight belongs elsewhere. Um, likely, this knight belongs over here. This knight belongs, I don't know, somewhere. That's one thing I didn't think too much about, is where do my knights actually belong? It's not an easy question to answer. I'm surprised it's... okay, there it is. And I was saying that moving either of my knights could stop knight to b6. And I was saying that where do my knights belong? Uh, so the opinion that they belong in d7 and c5, or c5 and a6, or something. Um, I think the salient point here... oh, okay. Actually, yeah, this threat of an invasion does force me to stop that. 
and in so stopping it, um, it's a little more difficult for this bishop to move freely. Am I forced to stop it? Can I just let the knight drop in here and mayhem ensue? Maybe. Maybe I could play either knight d7, which kind of stops it, or I could play knight a6, just flat out allowing a piece to go there. Uh, knight a6, he does bishop check. I have to block with my knight. He castles check. I have to block with another piece. And I'm very tied up. Um, and yeah, he just follows up with c5, and I'm a semi-permanent bind. Um, so, in order to stop me from losing heavy material, what do I have to do here? I guess knight d7. That's trapping my bishop. And that allows like c5 and bishop c4. Um, I want to play knight a6. Then he's got this check... And I guess I sack the pawn, because, I mean, actually sacking the pawn's not so bad. Um, it's not great, but it would solve some of my cramp issue that I caused. I could play b5 here and sack a pawn that way. What else can I consider? Yeah, this knight to b6 is annoying. Um, I suppose if knight a6, check, knight c7, castles, bishop d7, knight c5, king c8, knight takes, knight takes, I'm still okay, but I've given the bishop pair. Knight a6 looks reasonable. It's the least committal move, and it allows my bishop to continue to roam freely. Um, wait, knight a6, force it, oh, yeah, knight a6, if bishop check, I'm okay. If knight a6, if knight to b6, I think I'm forced to move my rook to b8. And I'm fortunately not losing material there, but, um, my a pawn is isolated, and there's really no way to support it. It's very much hanging out there. Um, but I don't know, that looks like a fun position. Let's play for it. So, unless... I, I've spent some minutes looking for tactics. I did double-check in my head these variations. Triple-checking might not have been a bad idea, since I do have the time for it. Oh. That's cool that there's so many players on the server. That's quite exciting. Um, so, yeah, if he checks me, I think I have to block. I just don't see how he intends to continue some sort of attack if he does that. And I could always interpose my bishop if his rook checks me, and then... Oh, maybe invert the move order. What if castle check? No, because then if bishop d7, rook takes, and if king rook... If king takes were forced, then you could play knight b6, but my rook protects my other rook. Um, so, I think in all lines, at worst, I'm losing just a pawn. Um, at best, things are going a lot better. But at worst, I think I'm only worrying about a pawn. Yeah, I think as is the case, um, many times I play in these events, um, I'm trying out lines that I've not tried um, in actual tournaments, because there's like no prize money at stake, and this is just a 15 minute game with increment, Check. Um, or 15 minute game plus increment, so there's really very little incentive for me to not experiment. Okay, he could take, and then take here. It doesn't net him anything. I was thinking his idea here was knight c5, but anyhow, I distracted myself. My point 
is that um, I have every incentive to try new things in this kind of format. If this were a longer, more serious game, um, I'd have more incentive to stick with what I know. Or to really double down, learn a system, and try it out here. Um, but here I'm just kind of winging it, playing systems that I'm, I sort of know. Um, things that I haven't played in quite some time or that I want to push the boundaries on and not just make concessions but try to exploit some kind of opening potential. Um, so yeah, this bishop does not jive so well with these pawns. Um, I fully expect, yep, there it is, c5. But in this position, that's not so useful. I mean, obviously bishop c4 is next. Um, to which, I guess I just play bishop e6 and I'm okay. Right? So step out of the pin. Incidentally, free my rook to move here if I wanted to. I don't know that I want to, but um, it's nice to have options. I guess one thing in his favor is that he's used two pieces to tie up one piece. Um, but this knight could move elsewhere and he'll be using one to tie up one. Um, okay, I have to recapture. Now I have the bishop pair. I don't think he's going to let me keep that. Oh. So if he plays knight b6, do I sack my rook? It's super tempting to try that out. Because this knight, I mean, this is the kind of position where it's semi-closed and um, it might make sense to do that kind of sack. Uh, so he attacks my f-pawn. I mean, if this is his grand conception that he gets to dislocate my pawns, I'm not so impressed. If I play bishop e6, bishop takes, pawn takes, I mean I'm going to play rook e8 and rook d8 in some order, then take on d6, uh, I guess he has rook takes there, play rook e8, he doubles his rooks, um, my knight already covers d7 so I've got time to play bishop c5, picking this, uh, trying to win it. Um, do you have anything else here? <laughs> Rook f8. It's a move. No, my bishop doesn't belong anywhere, so bishop e6 is fine. Uh, I could also throw in bishop h6, because this pawn's in the way. Pawn's not going anywhere. Um, the only reason not to play bishop h6 would be, I don't know, if I wanted to play h5 instead. And that's not on the agenda. Uh, I could always go back to f8 after checking here. And if I check, he has the option of playing king c2. Or, uh, well, I don't know if king c2 benefits him, but it might. Hmm. Actually, yeah, I could save this. Save this check. That way, if he plays rook d2, I pin it. If he plays rook d3, maybe it collides with his other pieces. So there's really no reason to play that immediately. I kept looking for candidate moves and finding none. I mean, finding the same ones over and over and rejecting them over and over and getting into a cycle where I'm like, ah, I don't see anything better. I'm just going to play this. So here's an idea. Um... One thing I'll need to do is protect e6, but it's a lot easier for me to target that than it is for him to defend it. This is a, we'll call it a hyper-modern system, even though that's a total abuse of the word. Um, so let's see what MC comes up with.
I withheld bishop h6 because I don't need to play it, and it doesn't gain me anything to force this king over. In fact, you probably just play king c2, regardless of what tempo I did all this stuff on. Um, king c2 seemed actually pretty good. If king c2 were disadvantageous, then yeah, I would have checked him and then done all this, but uh, I like his king better where it stands now. Actually, it's in the way of his rook moving over to b1. Maybe he wants to play a3, rook b1, b4. Um, but it takes him time to play all these moves. So I think right now he's considering, do I want to commit to rook d6? And if he commits to rook d6, then he's got to find some way to back that up, plan up. Um, and I don't think he's got time for it. One thing he could consider is knight b6, rook d8. And I don't know where he, how he follows that up. Um, but if somehow you were able to get knight b6 in with tempo, then I'd have things to worry about. Oh, so of this whole system, what do I think went wrong for white? I think this voluntary trade on c7 gave up a vital tempo. Uh, without this trade on c7, it's hard to see how white makes progress. Um, I'm sorry, with this trade it's hard to see how white makes progress. Without it, he can just be a little more flexible and ambiguous in what he's planning. But once he's committed to that, um, I mean, yeah, it does get rid of um, my piece that was formerly standing here, so I can't, like, drop my knight on black squares here. But um, this, this lasting pressure he has around my king seemed quite inconvenient for me. I think he just felt an urge to simplify and um, overestimated his chances a little bit. Oh, this is the variation I was trying to find earlier. Um, Rook d6 first, and then knight b6. Um, yeah, that does gain a tempo, because now when he trades on d8, um, I'll have... Actually, does it even gain a tempo? I don't think so. It just looks fancy. Um, yeah, he could have played knight b6 right away and then traded rooks, or he could throw in this rook d6 first, see if I find rook e8, and then throw knight b6 in. Either way, after a rook trade, um, assuming I do rook takes d8, it transposes into the same position. Um, one where all my pieces are active and all his pieces are on the edge of the board. It's an overstatement, but not much. My position's slightly superior here. Alright, so he's developing his pieces. Um, so his knight protects the c-pawn. His other knight... Oh, that's his threat. He's intending to bring his other knight to e6. So if I play rook here... Let's clear the arrows. If I play rook d8... And if he were to play knight g5... He's still down a tempo because I just do rook takes rook. Um, still, trading rooks is not benefiting me here. Um, also knight g5, I just pin the knight to the king and gg. Um, now he's aiming for some end game where... Huh, I'm not sure. He's got some plan in mind. Still, there's no reason for me not to play bishop f8. Like, there's nothing I can gain by playing some move other than this. Well, no, his rook's kind of exposed on d6. If I play rook d8 now, I'm forcing rook d1. Um, and then I could play bishop f8 and force some trades. And I'm still attacking c5. He's able... Oh, my knight protects h7, so he's not even able to win a pawn. Plus, if his knight went there, I could pin it again. So... Yeah, now this is this is starting to look up. Also, b5 is playable here. Um, 
The point being that b5, the knight moves, because if pawn takes pawn, I just take the rook. Um, b5 gives me an advanced pawn, weakens c5. Um, the only thing you could play in response to b5 really is knight here, threatening to try to win material. Although I could just pin the knight again. That theme just keeps popping up over and over. So b5, knight b6, rook d8. Um, I think this is really how I want to continue here, where I'm just apparently winning some material because of the weakness of this position. I think he needed... Wait, where was his knight before that? Oh, okay, so it's not like he could have just played rook d1 in one tempo. Um, so... Um, yep, knight b6 is forced. I attack his rook. I'm threatening to take and then take his knight. His knight's trapped currently, by the way. Um, actually, untrapping the knight's going to be kind of impossible for him. This kind of harkens back to... What was it? Was it last round, or was it the round before that? I think it was two games ago where I got one of my pieces trapped pressing too hard in an endgame. Um, and now it's my turn, apparently, um, to exploit my opponent who pressed a little bit too hard. Because how's he going to defend that? And I know I rarely make a big deal about the clock time, um, but here I am up seven minutes. Yes, we have an increment, but... Um, I guess more important than my being up is the fact that there's so little time remaining. It doesn't really matter how much time I have, but he's got to solve his problems in a minute. Plus increment. Um, that's not going to be easy. Also, I have to keep remembering that if knight g5, I just pin the knight. Oh, what he might plan, yeah, rook d1, and then if I attack the rook, he might do knight d7. That could throw my plans a little kilter a little bit. Because um, I just didn't see that. Oh wait, but if knight d7, rook, knight takes, rook takes, rook takes, rook takes, king takes, I actually outnumber him there. Okay. Well, we'll see where this goes. I'm still not seeing what he does about that. Apparently I can't both highlight the c5 pawn and pre-move rook takes rook. Um, I don't expect rook takes rook. I don't know what I expect. Okay. I have to take back. Still threatening c5. Still threatening c5. Oh, I don't win a knight. That, in fact, does not win a knight. Hmm. I thought I had something brilliant planned. So if I take there, I'm just losing a bishop. And if I pin the knight, he moves up his pawn to defend it. Okay. Well, guys, we got seven and a half minutes to think about this now. I was thinking I was winning a knight. I'm not winning a knight. Um, does that mean it's bad? Not necessarily. Um, I was just surprised to see that move so quickly. Uh, 
Okay, well, if I do king e7, then what? I guess my candidate moves are bishop h6. I've already looked at bishop takes pawn, which appears to just lose the bishop. Appears to being the key words, because it doesn't really lose the bishop at all. Um, but this bishop's a useful piece. I don't want to just trade it off. Um, what a mess. So if I pin it, he plays h4. I do something for a tempo. He moves his king. Let's take a look at bishop c5. This is the most violent option. Bishop takes, knight takes, king c7. Um, one of his knights either either takes there and I do king takes, and we have a weird endgame where I've got three pawns on the king's side. He's got four, uh, four on the... I've got three on the queen's side. He's got four on the king's side to my three, and uh, who knows how that might end up. Um, trying to preserve the status quo doesn't look so bad because um, it's my pawn structure is a little not so bad. Um, hmm. If I try to make this a bishop versus knight endgame, it doesn't seem to go well. Uh, yeah, my most violent option, I'd be surprised if it were winning, because um, that would have meant that my opponent miscalculated somewhere. Miscalculations do happen, but uh, when the result of the game banks on it, players tend to calculate a bit more clearly. Um, what else can I try here? So I'm kind of looking at king e7, but then we get a perpetual here. His king, his knight goes back and forth between c8 and b6 as I, my king dances between e7 and d7. Um, I can't really break out of that. Could, yeah, so my initial idea of pinning the knight still looks quite appealing. Not for the original reasons, but I guess in part because I'm thinking maybe I can start winning a pawn somehow. Um, like bishop here, h4. Knight to h5, threatening knight f4, threatening to take the pawn. Um, he can't play g3 to stop knight f4 because I just take g3. Could play g4 and then I drop my knight on f4. At some point I'm going to take and then come back and mop up the g-pawn. I think that's my best option because my more violent options don't seem to accomplish much. Violence is not the answer. Um, Another thing on the table is bishop e7, but that forces me to play king e8 and lets his knight out. So I have to go with this. Everything else is just bad. Um, but fortunately for me, this is apparently okay. And I could do... well no, as I was saying, trying to get this into a bishop versus knight endgame is not in my favor. I, I was going to say, I could do knight d7 and try to trade knights um, and see like if that particular endgame offers any chances. He can't break through, but neither can I. It's a draw if I do that. Um, I just have a fortress there. Like, literally, there's no breakthrough he can make, and my only breakthrough is by pushing my h-pawn, and he's easily stopping that. So I have to advance my knight. And it only has one way forward, and I hope that it's good enough. Um, yeah, my knight doesn't have any other paths forward other than just through h5. So knight here, king d2, uh, uh, take take, knight f4, pawn moves. We have a weird little end game going on. Uh, Although if he does king d2, 
there's all kinds of stuff we can consider here. And no time in which to consider it, because I'm spending too much time thinking and talking. And... Hmm. I like my position. It's a good position. If I trade there, can I somehow win this pawn? I have no space in which to win it. That's the problem. Knight h4 does not give up anything. Best maintains the status quo. If I had the e6 square, I could just take here and then play knight e6. Like, knight there, knight there, knight takes, but I don't have that square available. So he's got to deliberate between king d1, all these three options. Um, they're all reasonable. And once he moves off this diagonal, I think I pretty much have to take the knight. Yeah, maybe knight h5 surprises him. Okay, I did not expect that. This is why he's a candidate master. Um, he sees options that I miss. Um, I think I'm winning Check. this. Pretty sure I've got something here. My point is that I've got this tactic um, in addition to this. And if g3, I guess I could do knight e2, but why would I when I can just win this pawn? Okay, so this stops the fork. Um, do I just take g2? This is tense. Do I take a4? <laughs> do I play... No, I... I don't play a random move here. Um, I have to take some pawn. I'm thinking taking g2. Everything else seems to just capitulate, so this is the move I'm playing. I'm not going to allow him to get advanced pawns on the queen side either. Um, I control all these light squares, so he's still looking for some way to smash through. What is this move? Oh, this supports knight d7. So he's got some ideas here still. Um, he's giving his knight some way to move. Um, my knight's semi-trapped where it stands. So he's threatening to take that. Uh, I can't stop that capture. I can capture his g-pawn. Still a tense position. He's got a passed c-pawn, which I have to be somewhat concerned about. Um, do I push one of my pawns? No, because I lose material that way, although if I don't push a pawn I might be trapping my knight. Um, this is awkward. Uh, so I have to find some way out for my knight. I might have to sack my g-pawn.
What an awkward posi position. Uh, I'm thinking I'm okay here. Worst case, I lose my knight. Worst case, I lose my knight. Check. Okay, well, this is interesting. Oh, I could have played. No, h5 doesn't quite work. Um, Oh, I was thinking knight b5. That's not legal here. What a relief. What a relief. I was freaking out there for a minute. I'm like, what am I getting myself into? Um, no, this is a lot clearer. This is way, way clearer than what I was looking at if when the, with white playing knight, e, knight to b5. Um... Not only that, but I've kind of set his king off. So all he's got here is just the pawn push e5. Like I've segmented his, his king on the other side of the board. Do I take the pawn or do I just push g5? I think I take here. Take here. I probably have good chances in this end game. So knight a1's forced. And how is he going to win this exactly? play something. Check. I think I have reasonably good winning chances here. Check. 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 Where's the mate? There's the mate. Victory. I found it. Okay. Whew. What an end game. What a show. No, I think he just overpressed this game, honestly. I think he had really good chances throughout. Um, this bishop takes knight, I do not understand. I, I think he had to continue development. 
Um, this is just optimistic. I mean, this is all predicated around this idea of bishop c4, trying to win the pawn, messing up my pawn structure, and hoping he builds up an initiative, and it just didn't happen. Um, so with that, I'll turn back coverage to our host, to the ladder. Uh, thanks for watching. Red. And I uh, hope to see you next time.